My name is Lance uh, Ruji. I work for Discovery Education, but I actually started my career as a, a middle school teacher in the, the school district of, of Philadelphia. Uh, and I want to talk to you today about um, the, the transformative role of technology in education. And I thought I would start here. So how many of you, how many of you know what that is? maybe 25% of us. I'm pretty sure it's C++, uh, if Google's not failing me. And the reason I'm pretty sure is, <laughs> ironically, I got a C in that class, <laughs> C++ programming in college. Uh, it was actually the first C that I ever got in my educational career. And it's not because I'm particularly bright. I was just a good student. I was trained well as a student. I was a good test taker. I, I loved writing essays. Right, so I did well. But this class in college, the first time I got a C, which at the time was devastating, because you're paying not to get Cs, it turned out to be the best course, the most impactful learning experience that I've ever had. And here's why. This course required, because of Professor Gormley, that we show up very early on a Monday morning, the 8 o'clock class, and we were assigned a project. And the project was due on Friday. And he gave us his cell phone number. And if we needed help, we could call him. And that man, 15 years ago, his cell phone bill must have been $7,000 a month. <laughs> I remember calling him, and he was at a Phillies game, and he would pick up. But the, the, the project was pretty open-ended. And our assessment was, on Friday, does it actually work? Does it run? And the way we could go about solving that was, working with our peers. And for me, this was out of the box. I was very used to sitting in rows and being given information and spitting information back out. And now I was challenged to connect, to create, to collaborate with my peers. And ultimately, it was because of the masterful pedagogy of Professor Gormley. Now, when we see this word, pedagogy, we normally are talking about the process of being a teacher or, or the act of teaching, or the learning to become a teacher. But the word actually means, when you break it down into its origin, into its roots, the word actually means to lead the child. So where are we leading children today? For me, Professor Gormley led me to a place and prepared me for the work I'm doing now. When I was teaching middle school <coughs> 10 years ago, I never thought I would be working on and leading a team of 20 plus amazing colleagues spread out all over the world. And you know what we do every day? We connect, we create, and we collaborate. And his pedagogy is what has made me be successful. So there's a role of technology in, in all of this, that we want this for our students. This is what our students need. This is the environment that they're going to be working in, right? So the first piece when it comes to transformation and technology is pure access. Access to information, access to possibility. This is a picture right here of my, my wife's class. She's a middle school teacher in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And her students are actually using our Discovery Education Science tech book. And in, in that picture, they're going over their academic vocabulary. And in her class this year, she has students with visual impairments. She has a lot of students uh, who first language is, is not English. They speak Spanish at home, speak another language at home. She has students with tons of different learning preferences. Right? And those preferences for middle school students, hormone-filled middle school students, they change Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to Friday. Right? So she has this, this group of learners. How do you reach those learners? Well, that's the first transformative nature and role of technology is it can help address the needs of all of those learners, right? So I'll, I'll model it for you. Allopatric speciation. And based on all of the folks, the rocket scientists, put your hand down when I ask this question, right? Does anybody know what allopatric speciation is? Thank you for playing along. Nobody put their hands up, right? Allopatric speciation is a word that I, I went into our interactive glossary that my wife uses with her sixth graders, right, to just model this and find, OK, let me find a word that I don't know. And the sad part about this is I didn't make it out of the A's. Uh, and this is a product for middle school kids. But <laughs> allopatric speciation, for me, I read the definition. The definition can be switched between different languages. And then there's key context.
for me, that didn't make it. So then I watched a video, all right? Helped a little bit. Where it clicked for me was when I was able to see the animation, all right? And I was able to visualize that and read the text along with it. And, and the point of this is, this is one of the most powerful pieces of uh, the, the role of technology in transforming education is we can represent content in a variety of ways for students of all sorts of different learning modalities, right? And, and it's relatively simple. I mean, honestly, don't get overly impressed, and hopefully you're not. We should not be overly impressed with this. We can do this. You probably do this every day. You have technology in your phone that can do this. We can translate sites, right? But for a sixth grade teacher and a 12-year-old student, this transforms the learning during the day because now all sorts of students with different learning challenges, different learning preferences can access the information and can access the content. So that's important, but we should be doing this everywhere. And this is where we're pushing the boundaries at Discovery Education. We're not. We're not doing this everywhere. We are still warehousing textbooks that by the time they get into that warehouse, they're out of date. If they do make it into a classroom at all, they're out of date. And it's not so much, I mean, I love books. It's not so much the book itself. To me, it's the mentality and the culture in this kind of corrosive tradition that's associated with this whole idea of we put a textbook in front of a kid and the teacher at the front and the teacher is gonna give the information to the kid and the kid is gonna spit the information back. And guess what? Doesn't work. Doesn't work for those kids who, if they can't read that textbook and they don't have extra supports because they can't see, they would love that text just to be a little larger to see it, they have no access, they have no starting point. And quite honestly, this to me, I'm gonna jump back, this to me is the equivalent of giving a child medicine. And this is saying, I'm gonna withhold that medicine. Right? We wouldn't do that. We wouldn't do that. So why are we doing that? Well, it's tradition, it's fear, there's a lot of, you know, we're, we're slowly taking steps. Politics aside, Common Core, Next Generation Science Standards, STEM, 21st Century Skills, whatever, whatever initiative it is, whatever you call it, we, we are moving forward, all right? Because at their, at their core, at their highest level, what we're talking about is getting students to do things like create and collaborate and connect and have these authentic, real-world, meaningful experiences, right? So this is actually the, the conceptual uh, shifts from the next generation science standards, right? Just really quickly, see if you can find the word understanding. All right, got it, somebody pointed. Find the word facts. A little harder to do, right? It's super tiny, and then I sneakily made it really dark blue, all right? But <laughs> the point here is whether it's next gen or these shifts, we're talking about true understanding and not just this old model, this model, this mentality of a warehouse model, where we're not just warehousing books, we're actually warehousing kids in schools that are not engaging their minds, that are not making them curious, that are not allowing us to do those things. I mean, I, I am so glad to have followed that, the, the, the presentation, Dr. Billis, and your performers, because you said, we don't want students to just be coordinates on a plane, right? We want them to create. This is actually, <laughs> this looks really yummy or not, depending on your preference, right? This is something at a, a summer program that my wife and I run every year. Uh, we had a guest come in from Hershey Corporation, and she was talking about her job and all of the different component parts of that. So we challenged the students. We did a little bit of research about Hershey and about her and about the different types of, of jobs that they have. And then we challenged the kids. You know, the s'more, how many of you, quick show of hands, have eaten a s'more? Okay, everybody, right? Consensus there. So the s'more is perfect. So make something that's perfect even more perfect. All right, so we challenged them in this open-ended to, to create. And they gave us a shopping list, which was the grossest shopping list I've ever seen in my life. They're middle school kids, so we went, to, we went to Wegmans and I picked up Pop Rocks and gummy worms and bacon and pepperoni and other things that are too disgusting to even mention. But they created this and they presented it. And the idea is that, so what does this have to do with technology? Well, Technology can help us enhance this creative process, right? 
Last weekend, my wife's students built a community garden. The week before, they worked with a landscape designer to actually mock it up, all right? Which involves some really deep, rich standards, connections, and math, and all of the things that we, that we want. That, you know, that one side of the house says, we must, you know, we must meet standards, and we must follow Common Core or Next Gen, and the other side says, we want to create. Well, they're not mutually exclusive. All right? This was a deep, rich, meaningful, tapping into critical thinking and higher order skills where the students designed this, but then they actually went on a Saturday and built it. Technology, in addition to creating and giving students the opportunity to collaborate on that process, is also amazing at connecting. Two weeks ago, I was in Illinois and moderated a virtual field trip with our, our friends at the American Egg Board where we showed 10,000 classrooms, all right, quarter of a million students at the same time, what it looked like to take an egg from farm to table and all of the different careers and jobs and they got to ask questions live of the farmers. So that's the second piece when it comes to technology transforming education. The first is access to information and opening up the content and opening up the curriculum. The second is this idea of now we can actually have students with the support of technology to create and to collaborate and to connect. So again, why is it not happening more and more? Well, it is. It is happening. It's slow. It's not like other industries. It's, it's a slower pace because we keep making some of the same mistakes, right? We keep dumping tools and devices into a system that is the same when what we're really trying to do is get to the bottom picture here that is a heck of a lot more messy and more difficult, but at the same time, it's more rewarding when we have students collaborating and connecting and creating together. The role of the teacher changes. The role of the teacher shifts. That teacher is a lead learner that is connecting the dots and designing experiences that are a little less easy to quantify than turn to page 27. So here's the, the secret sauce. Technology, opening up the curriculum to students and providing access, giving us the ability to create and connect and collaborate, student to student, classroom to classroom. But it has to start here with our lead learners. All right, that's the third piece. Teachers, and, and this is what I see with my wife and I, I run our Discovery Educator Network community, I see this every day. The power of teachers, of lead learners, connecting with each other in ways that weren't possible two years, five years, let alone 10 years ago, where on a Saturday they get together and connect with 3,000 other educators from the comfort of their pajamas at home, all right, and taking professional learning, taking ownership of that. Because ultimately, they're the ones that need to model creating and connecting and collaborating for our students. And when we do that, and it's a difficult, hard process, we see great results. We have a, a great partner in Collier County, Florida, and for the past several years, they took this really brave leap and went full force into the digital transition. All right, adopted digital textbooks, but they did it the right way, right? Because they invested in professional learning for their teachers. They got their school board on board. They've done community nights. They have put the tools into the hands of the, the, the students as well as the parents, and it's been this community collective effort. And when we do that, we see great results. So in, in closing here, a lot of you, I know as we were talking at lunch, there are entrepreneurs and, and businessmen and businesswomen here and, and, and some folks from education even we're always looking in education. We talk about transforming education through technology or what's the role of technology. Well, there are kind of three different ones as I've outlined, but there's no killer app. And I think that's the thing we always look for. There's no killer app. Well, actually there is. She's standing in the front of the room. If we give our teachers and in turn our schools the digital content and the support and the resources that that she needs for her students to open up the content and make it accessible for all of our students. If we give her the opportunity to professionally develop herself and connect and collaborate with other colleagues, and then this is the key part, if we all collectively, as business leaders, as parents, as community members, 
if we all support her and say, it is okay, you do not have to teach in that warehouse anymore, we want you creating and connecting and collaborating with your students, if we do that, then we allow her to actually lead children. So I hope next week, it's the, the timeliness of this is perfect, next week starts Teacher Appreciation Week, National Teacher Appreciation Week. Here's my challenge to all of you here, all of you watching, do something nice to recognize and celebrate a teacher, a teacher of yours, a teacher of your child's. Right? Do something to say thank you and we support you. We love that you are leading children. Thank you so much. <laughs>